Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So today we are going to continue down this Python rabbit hole and we're going to start to look at dictionaries as data structures. Now we talked a lot uh, last time about lists as data structures and we're going to just kind of upgrade here a little bit and we're going to look at another type of data structure called dictionaries. Um, so to get started right, I'm going to do the thing I normally do with a new project. I'm just going to empty out everything here. And first we're going to kind of explore a part of what this looks like just from a kind of fundamental perspective in terms of what that means for Python. Um, because we're doing all of this stuff with Python, it becomes really important for us to kind of uh, use that as our kind of ideological frame, right? And we can start to, uh, as we're working from there, we can start to pull apart why this might be important for us here in Touch Designer and what we might learn from it. But first off, what we need to do is we need to kind of get a handle on what is a dictionary. Um, so let's go ahead and add a text stat here into our network. And we're going to start to just kind of dig in to what this might be. Now, last time we looked at lists. And I'm going to continue, um, by the way, uh, my habit of editing this in an, in an external editor just so we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bigger. There we go. So that you can actually read that properly. Wonderful. Uh, so last time, we started with uh, an idea of like a grocery list, right? And in our list, we had something like eggs, milk, butter, uh, coffee, right? And all of these things are strings in here. And we kind of had this as a way to think about, you know, something that we might want to get from the store. And we learned that we can actually grab things from this uh, list, right, by specifying an index. So we could do something like uh, item one in our list is, and if we save that and uh, ran that, okay, cool. So that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, and we like that a lot. But what we're missing here is we're missing a sense of quantity. Right? Like how many eggs, how much milk, how many pounds of butter, and so on and so on. Now, uh, the very clever of you are going to say, well, you know what, Matt? That's fine. You know what we can do is we can just make this thing a list of lists. We learned how to do that last time. And we could take this whole thing and we could make this a list. This is going to be a list. This will be a list. And you get a list and you get a list and you get a list. And everything in our list, we're just going to decide kind of arbitrarily that the first item is going to be the actual uh, thing that we want from the store. And the second thing in our list is going to be our quantity. And we can do a little bit of kind of prettier organization here with this so that we can make this a little more human readable because that's always nice in my opinion you can make something that a human can read so we might say eggs uh, we have a dozen uh, we've got um, I don't know one quart of milk uh, we're gonna do maybe one pound of butter and last but not least, uh, we're going to do, oops, ay ay ay, two pounds of coffee. Great. Now we'll see that when we um, when we run this, right, we get that item one on our list is a list itself, and it's eggs, and we want one dozen. Dozen. <laughs> That's funny. Oops. Great. And we might revise what we're printing here, right? We might say item one in our list is the first list, the, uh, the first item in that list. And then we need to add another line here that's going to be you should get 
and then we're going to say grocery list and we're going to do the same kind of thing right so the first list and in that list we want the second item okay and then we run that ah whoo that's great that's really clever that's lovely So we could do lists of lists all day long, and that's that would just be like peachy and wonderful. And you know maybe that's going to be sufficient for a lot of the things that we want to do, which it's likely going to be. There are some circumstances, however, where we might not want to do this. So for example, in this particular scenario, we have a bunch of things that are all stored in uh, a kind of linear arrangement, right? When we look at our list, we're not actually, we have to know the index of an item, or we're going to have to do a test where we look through all the indexes of our, of our list to try and track a thing down, and uh, that could get a little bit messy. So dictionaries are a little bit different than that, right? A dictionary is based on the idea of a key value pair. And what that means is that in our uh, in our dictionary, we have something that has a key, or we might think of a key as name, and then it's got a value, and we might think of a value as being, uh, you know, some kind of thing that goes along with it. So let's look at what that means uh, a little bit more specifically, right? Let's look at what that, uh, how that might relate to our grocery list example. So let's go ahead, and we're going to make our same grocery list again, but this time, instead of making it a list, we're going to make it a dictionary. And you'll notice that I've used these uh, curly brackets instead. Now the syntax of this is a little bit different. In the case of a list, or excuse me, in the case of a dictionary, we've got a key, and our key is usually a string, right? So eggs is our key, and our value, uh, that's its pair. In this case, I'm going to also make it a string, but we'll see in a little bit that we don't have to do that. Right, we're separating those this time with a colon instead of with a comma like we might in a list. And when we add another item here in our dictionary, uh, we're going to use a comma to do that. So eggs, one dozen. Okay, uh, let's go through, right? We've still we've got uh, milk. Whoa, out of control. Butterfingers, milk, and we said one quart. And then we said butter. And we wanted one pound. And finally, we said coffee. And because we run on coffee, we needed two pounds. OK, that's great. And let's see what happens when we print that, right? Let's go ahead and print our grocery list, just to get a sense of what that might look like. OK, well, that looks an awful lot like the thing we put in. So why, Matt, is that any better or any worse? Like, geez, it's just a different kind of thing. Well, when we're uh, fetching things from our dictionary, what we can do is instead of specifying an index, we're going to use our key. So in this case, we can use a key eggs. And when we ask for eggs, what we're going to get back this time is now we're going to get back one dozen. We're going to get back the matching value to that item, to that key. And the reason that's important is that these aren't uh, held in any particular or special order, right? Unlike a list where I need to know the index of a thing, I need to know where it lives in the list to get to it. In my dictionary, I just need to know the name of the thing and I can grab it. So I could actually do these in any order that I wanted. Right? My, my dictionary is pretty agnostic about when I'm asking for a thing. Which means that we end up with things where it doesn't matter how we're asking for that. Right? So we could probably like tidy this up a little bit. We could say, um, what did we say before? You should get
great. When we run this, you should get one. Ah, oof, ha ha ha. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You know what? We need to like do one other thing in here. You should get eggs. Actually, you know what? We'll do this. You should get one dozen eggs. of coffee. There we go. Aha! There we go. So that's great. That's wonderful. Okay. You know, it's still, it still feels like, well, you know, why do we care about that? That that seems like it's me. You know, we could go kind of either way on what that might mean. And uh, before we get along too far, we should look at a few other things that we can do here. All right, and I'm gonna actually going to go ahead and I'm going to start to put in a few other things. I'm going to make a new variable called line break. And we're just going to put in a quick line break here so we can start to see where these things break up. Right, so, you know, just so we can kind of get a sense of what it is that I just did, right, I've just actually inserted these breaks so we actually have so a little bit of, like, breathing room around what we're doing so we can see some additional um, space. Okay, right, why, okay, well, why, Matt? Well, I'm doing that because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to print the keys, right? So we're going to print out just the keys that are inside of this dictionary. Okay, so... Why would you do that? Well, if we print out the keys, we see that we actually get a list of all of the things, right, of all of the keys that exist here in our dictionary. Okay, that's not bad, right? Because now when we start to talk about for loops and things that we can do with for loops, um, we'll start to see where that becomes really useful uh, in order to getting, in terms of getting things out of here. We can also... Uh, get access to our items, our values. So if we run this, we can see that we not only can get our keys, right, coffee, eggs, milk, butter, but we can also get their corresponding value, two pounds, one dozen, one quart, one pound. So knowing that we can actually grab those things, that starts to become really useful and really powerful when we start to think about this as a data structure. Now, you know, we're still kind of in abstract land, and that's okay. Hang on with me a little bit longer, because we're going to do a little bit more in terms of understanding how we work with dictionaries before we kind of get into the nitty-gritty of why that's useful or powerful or important or, or what have you. But, you know, hang on. Hang on tight. It's going to be great, I promise. So let's take this, right? Let's hold on to that. We're going to leave that behind. And now we're going to look at a circumstance, right, where we ask ourselves, well, how do we build a dictionary, right? Because chances are I want to build something from the ground up. So let's look at that. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to um, make a brand new dictionary that's empty. We did this with the list, right? So we start with our empty dictionary. Okay, well, now how do I add things to this? Well, in the case of my dictionary, right, I can add things to it by giving it a new key. And then as I've given it a new, new key, I can also give it a value that's associated with that. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and print out um, our keys and our values. just so we can get a sense of what it is that we just did. You know what else I'm going to do while I'm here? We are going to add a new line, just so we can do a little bit of pretty printing here. Because we are going to want to have a new line after this. Trust me, it's going to be great. It'll be great. OK, anyway. Okay, let's take a look at what happened there. 
All right, so we went ahead and we added this thing cookies and we added this, or we added this thing new item that's got the value cookies, okay. That's lovely. And that seems pretty straightforward enough. So let's do that one more time, right? I'm gonna take all that stuff that I just wrote, I'm gonna reuse it, and we're gonna do new item two this time around. Okay, well, let's put some, new item two is gonna be cell phones, why not? Right, so we'll add another new item to our list. Okay, so now we see we've got uh, new item one, cookies. And then we added another item, new item one, new item two, cookies and cell phones. Let's add a few more things, right? We're on a tear. We're on a, like, put things in our dictionary tear. Why not? Because we're not limited to just strings. We could put in floats. And we don't have to just put in, or excuse me, we could put in ints, integers. Uh, and we could also put in floats. Why not? You know, it's a wild place out here in the West. We might as well add some other things here to our dictionary. All right, and let's see what we got. Okay. Right, we've got all these fancy things that we'll notice as we print out our keys and our values that they don't necessarily stay in order, right? That's, that's okay, because we're not interested in them staying in order in this particular case. For us right now, that's not really what we're, we're on about. If we want something to have a very particular order, then we would use a list, right? Because that's what lists are made to do. But for us, when we're dealing with the dictionary, we're really just thinking about how we can have pairs of things that when I ask for one, I always get the other. Now, this is pretty cool and this is pretty exciting, but we're not done, right? Because we don't have to just add things like uh, integers and strings and floats and booleans, right? We could also do something wild, like maybe add a list itself. All right, so let's go ahead and add a list of numbers. We need to call this item five. All right. And now we can see that we've got this whole list of numbers in here that's item five. And that's, that is the beginning of where it gets really fun to use our dictionaries instead of lists because we can start to embed things and nest information inside of these in ways that is really, really exciting. Right, let's look at another example of that um, that's a little bit, that gives us an opportunity to really kind of pull that apart just a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and make another new text app and we are gonna just edit the tar out of it because this is, our, this is what we're doing. All right, so we're gonna make another thing, another new, new dictionary. All right, and again, we're using our curly brackets. Now you'll notice that one of the things that I do is I like to use some white space um, when I'm making my dictionary sometimes, just like we did with those lists, uh, because it can be like a little bit just cleaner. It's more easily uh, legible by a human, like we were saying earlier, for me to see it this way. Okay, so let's say that we've got apple and uh, the value that corresponds to that is 12, right? We're just going to repeat what we've done earlier. We're going to just make a list, excuse me, make a dictionary. Um, and in making a dictionary, just see what kind of data types we can put in here. And then look one more time at how we get things out of here. So now we've got this lots of things. And lots of things is going to be our list. And what are we going to put in our list? Well, we might put um, pens, right? We could put a, a string. We could put an integer. Oops. We could put a float. And we might put a boolean. Right, so we've put all these things inside of our dictionary. Now, we know that if we wanna get, say, apple out of here, right? 
So we use my dictionary, we use square brackets. In our square brackets, we put in the key we're looking for. So we know how that's probably going to work, right? We know that when we ask for Apple, we should get 12 back. That's working pretty well. But how do we get what's in this lots of things, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's stick that in there and let's see what we get when we print that out. Okay, so we get the whole list. We get the whole kit and caboodle, right? Well, what do we do with that? Why is that? That seems like it might be a headache. And we can ask in this case for the items uh, out of our list, right? We can get those with an index. So if we look at this, right, so I've used zero, which should be the first thing in my list, which should be pens. And sure enough, it's pens. Okay, well, let's practice. Let's go ahead and grab all the things out of that internal list, right? So we know we've got pens, zero, 44, one, 5.5, 5, 2, true is 3. Right, and we know that like, that's probably how we're going to get these things. Well, well, does that work? Well, let's check. And sure enough, it does. That gets us all of the contents of what's inside of that list. Now, we're not done yet, right? Because there's more things to kind of learn and pull apart here. Um, and the thing, the place where this starts to get really interesting and really exciting is when we start to think about the fact that we can actually put dictionaries inside of dictionaries. Right, so just like we could put lists inside of lists, we can put dictionaries inside of dictionaries, and that's really where our magic um, begins to, to occur. That's where things start to get very exciting, and we start to have uh, opportunities that we might not have had before. So let's look at what that might be, right? So we're going to go back to our tried and true idea where we've got, uh, we're running a grocery store, because why not? Grocery stores seem like they'd be fun to run. Um, and so let's do my inventory. Great. And our inventory is going to be a dictionary of dictionaries. Now we might have, uh, in our inventory, we might have things like Apple, right? Like that might be an item that we have in stock. That's going to be a dictionary. And let's just go ahead and build that first one out because this will act as a template for the rest of that ours. So our Apple might have uh, a property like uh, quantity, right? So we might have a quantity of apples. I mean, we're a grocery store. We better have a quantity of apples. Um, we might want to know the origin of these particular apples, right? We might want to know where our fruit's coming from. Um, from Vermont, why not? We might want to know if they're uh, organic, right? This is like another property that we might want to know if this thing has. Is Vermont sure they're true? That's true. Okay, so we've built out our first kind of uh, prototypical idea of what our uh, what this item is going to look like, and um, we might collapse that, right? Like here inside of a fancy text editor, we can collapse all that because it's smart about what we've done. <laughs> okay, but we're not done yet, right? We need to add a few more things. Uh, let's add a total of four things here. Right, so we've got apples, uh, maybe we've got oranges, and now I've got to go ahead and enter a bunch of things in here. Um, Right, and hopefully if you're playing this game at home, you might um, put some different things in here. Or, you know, for right now, you can follow along exactly, and then your challenge can be, how about you put your own things in here and see if you can push this a little bit farther. Right, and we're almost there, uh, grapes. And I don't know, we've got 50 grapes, because they're tiny. They're wee, they're so wee, those little grapes. Um, I, don't, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right, great. So here we've got this thing, right? Now we've got this inventory 
that's full of stuff, right? And uh, you might say, well, you know, gosh, that that seems uh, like a headache, right? Because if we print out our inventory, we're going to get what looks like a mess, right? We get this, like, big, long thing, um, and well, how, do, how, do we, how do we handle that? Well, we might remember, right, that we could do something interesting, right? Like, we might say, um, with my inventory, uh, let's print the keys, right? Let's see what keys come out of this thing. And our keys returns just a list of the top-level keys, right? Just apple, orange, kiwi, grapes. Okay, well, that's, that's all well and good, but I also happen to know, right, that my first thing, right, I know the first thing that I was looking at is also a dictionary. And sure enough, I can get the keys out of that thing, too. Right? So this is, I mean, we're, we're on the edge of something that looks pretty exciting. And in fact, um, what we might do, right, is we might even go to the length of thinking about how we can get all of this stuff out of here. Because we know how to get it out of lists if we put lists inside of dictionaries. But how do we get more information out of dictionaries and dictionaries? Well, let's look at that. Let's just do a simple one first. So uh, let's start. Oh, and I need doubles. So let's first look at Apple. Not the brand Apple, but the key Apple. So in terms of Apple, right, we're going to, uh, we want to know a lot of things about it, right? We might want to know its uh, quantity because we happen to know that's a thing here inside of our dictionary. And we're going to use my inventory, and we're going to start by first asking for the key that corresponds to the first uh, item, right? The first key value pair. So first, we want apple. So that's this level, right? And then the next level we might look for would be quantity right? That's here. So let's print that out, and let's see um, if that gives us what we're expecting. Aha! So that does. That gives us our quantity. Well, let's push that a little bit further then, right? Because we know that there are two other things in here. We know there's origin. Oops. We also happen to know that we've got a uh, quality called organic, All right? And what I'm doing here is I'm just changing the first part of this thing I'm printing out, and then I'm changing this last key. Uh, and if we do that, oh, look at that. So we've got Apple, 12 Vermont True. Oh, all right. So let's practice, right? Because practicing is what we do. When we're learning something. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to want a new line, right? Because, like, heavens, I just like those. Yeah, new line. There we go. Okay. So what we can ha what we can think about doing is we can actually, rather than, like, rewriting this a bunch, but we can just reuse it, right? We've got a bunch of stuff we can reuse here. So Apple was the first thing that we looked at. Um, next, let's look at orange, right? And we can just, uh, in this case, all we have to do is we just have to change this particular key, right? We only need to change this first key because everything else is going to be the same, right? Um, so orange is first. Okay, what about 
What about, not Kiki, Kiwi. What about Kiwi? Right? Which means this is the, the key we've got to change here. Okay, and finally, we can't forget about grapes. Oops. Okay, Woo. there we go. We've, written, we've, we've written 48 lines of code here. This is our data structure, right? This whole thing, this is our dictionary. This is all the stuff we're gonna print out. Let's see if we actually got that all printed out. So first, let's look at apple. Next, let's look at orange. What about kiwi? We can't forget about grapes. Right, so we've, we've retrieved all of those things. Now, we might take that a step further, right? Because we might say, well, oof, ugh, you know, that's, that's kind of cumbersome, uh, and I don't want to do all that writing. And we're going to learn uh, later on about how we might use a for loop to print out everything inside of this. But we could do something a little bit sassier. So I just made a copy of this. So we could still have the other one, right? We could do something sassy where we took all of this stuff and we instead thought about a different way of printing this out, right? We might instead create a new variable called uh, inventory item and we're going to let inventory item be a string like apple, right? So first, let's look at inventory item. Now I'm going to use this variable to stand in for the first key, right? Because this is going to allow me to write this whole shenan shenanigan just one time and now I could actually change just that single variable in order to get all the results. Okay, let's see what that actually means. So let's go ahead and clear this out. Let's run this. Okay, so first let's look at apple. Okay, well, let's change that to orange. Right, so all we've done is we've changed this single variable. All right, now we've got orange. That's, that's exciting. Now, this still might feel like a little bit like blah, 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 blah. And what I'd like to do is I want us to look at another way that we can print out some stuff. I want to give a shout out to my uh, coworker and good friend, Willie Nolan, who uh, taught me some very important things about text parsing in Python 3 versus Python 2. So uh, before we were doing like this business, right? And we are going to just jettison all of our ideas about using these percentage sign uh, shenanigans, and we're going to use a Python 3 way of, way of writing some really fancy schmancy text. So let's look at that. Let's uh, make some text. So my text, and um, we're going to do some multi-line text, because multi-line text is a blast, right? So we've got some multi-line text here, and first, uh, so we're going to start with here with, we're going to look at, and we can use curly braces um, to actually stand in for things that we're going to pass in here. So we're going to look at curly braces, which means we're really going to use that uh, as our first item here, right? Orange. So we're going to look at curly braces. Um, and next, the next thing after that is going to be quantity. Our quantity of uh, our quantity is curly braces. Its origin is curly braces. And its organic status is curly braces. <laughs> okay, <laughs> super man, <laughs> that's like curly brace city. Hooray! How does that even matter? <laughs> uh, and that's, you know, hold on, you know, ride the ride with me here just a little bit. 
So w now what we're gonna do is, let's get rid of this thing here. Gone, lovely. Um, we're going to uh, do something like this. We're gonna make some new variables, quantity, origin, organic, right? And we're gonna let these variables actually be um, our dictionary items here, right? So quantity is my inventory, my inventory item, this thing, and the quantity, okay? We're gonna do the same thing over here. Last but not least, it's organic status. We can get rid of all of this stuff. Okay. Oh, we're almost there, I promise. And then finally, we're going to, we're not going to print. You might need a pint uh, after all this. We're going to print out text. Uh, you know what? And we should give that. Let's do inventory text. We're going to clean that up. So we're going to print out text. And we're going to pass into text. Uh, are we going to do text.format? That's actually what we need to do. And this dot format is going to allow us to pass in first our inventory item, right? And then after we've passed in our inventory item, next up we're going to pass in quantity, and after quantity, origin, and then finally organic, right? And we've defined all of those variables here, right? So inventory item is inventory item, quantity, origin, or organic. Those are also defined by inventory item. And the text that we get out of this is going to be this thing that's formatted where each one of these curly braces gets one of these things that we pass to it. Well, hopefully that'll make sense. Let's make let's try it out. Let's see if that worked. Oh uh, text. Oh gosh, excuse me. We changed our, our thing right here, inventory text, and we forgot to change it here. And Inventory text. Okay. Let's see. Aha! We're going to look at orange. Our quantity is 20. Its origin is California. Its organic status is false. So, right? Okay, like, and we might feel like, oh, that's a lot of work. That's not exciting yet. But it also means that all we have to change is this single... Uh, variable, right? So apple is all we have to change in this. And in changing apple, we get different results. And that's really stinking swanky. That is, um, that is really pretty swarthy right there is what that is. It gives us a ton of new options and a, uh, a lot of opportunities to really think about how we can start to work with data in, in an interesting way. And in terms of how we're formatting text, that is a pretty like, ooh, that is a pretty sexy text for, uh, parser right there, let me tell you what. And text formatting is, ooh, gorgeous. Okay, next up, right, in part two, what we're gonna start to look at is we're gonna look at, well, why do I care about that? here in Touch Designer, right? Like now that we understand kind of some preliminary things about dictionaries and how dictionaries work, why do I care? And oh, how could it possibly matter to me? Because so far, this feels like it's pretty disconnected from the kinds of things that we do inside of Touch, but I promise that it's not. So we'll look at some really exciting and fun things next. We'll look at one example really that I think will help illustrate a bunch of why this is important. All right, see you on the flip side.